Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. Today we have a very, very good problem for you guys. We're going to be going over missing number, right? This is a very good problem, so make sure you pay close attention to it, right? So it says given an array of nums containing n uh, distinct numbers right, in the range of 0 to n, return the only number in the range that is missing from the array, guys, right? So a very easy prompt statement to understand, not verbose, very concise, which we like, right? Uh, so easy prompt, so it says, uh, Telling us to give an array uh, containing n distinct numbers, right? So they're all unique. Return the number that's missing, right? So that's what we're saying. And the numbers are within the range of 0 to n, right? So make sure that we keep that in mind. It's a very important for this problem, right? Should we read all the details? That's very, very good. So let's go through a couple of examples to kind of, you know, solidify the ask, right? So that we know what they're asking for. So we have 301, right? So those are the values, right, in this array, right? And they're from zero to n, right? And we see that we had, since it, and the value, n equals three, right? And all we look through, we see that two is the only missing numbers from zero to n, right? It's not in there. It's not within that, in that range, guys, right? Two is the missing one, right? Okay, so we see that nums equals zero, to, is zero and one, right? We see that two is the one that's missing because the size of the array is two, guys, right? And two, uh, is the missing number, right? Because we have zero and one, but two is not in there, so it's missing. Uh, okay, so this is for example, right? The size of the array is nine, guys, right? So the numbers that we should have in this array should be from zero to nine, right? Including nine as well, right? Um, but for this example, we saw that eight is the one that's missing. We have all, all the numbers, right? But eight is missing, okay? So very, very good. Um, so how do we solve this problem, guys, right? You know, this problem's uh, very fun. Let's see how to solve it. Um, so normally we like to start off with the most obvious solution, which is to do um, whatever comes to mind, right? So what I'm thinking in the straightforward way, right? Since we've done problems like that before, um, we can use some sort of data structure, I'm thinking, right? So we have a data structure we, that can help us to remember the numbers, right, in, in a particular uh, array, right? So we would add those numbers to a sort of data structure, right? And the data structure choice has to be, of, has to be some sort of a data structure that has, you know, insertion should be of one and um, the lookup as well should be of one, guys, right? So, uh, so how do we do it, guys? Right. So we want a data structure that has fast lookup and uh, easy insertion, guys. Right. So, um, so we add those numbers to, to whatever data structure, right? and then we will loop through for, uh, for all the numbers within the range, right, from zero uh, to n, guys. Right. And we check, right, the data structure. Right. Is there a zero, right, that was present? Yeah, zero. Right. Is there a one that's uh, present? Yes, there's a one. Is there a two that's present? Right. Then we return uh, two because two is not would not be present in the data structure that's keeping track of the uh, numbers, right? Um, yeah, so the, the data structure of choice would have been a has set algorithm right? because we could easily do a quick lookup and check all of one, right? If an element's present or not, right? Instead of having to look through the array over and over again to see if a number is present, right? We just store it in a has set and then loop through all the numbers from zero to n, right? The range from zero to n and find the, the one that's missing right that will return right away guys right so it's very very good uh, the solution would not be too bad but um it's a very good start to solution guys right so the time complexity would be o of n as well right o of n and the space as well would be o of n as well right uh so they're asking us now can we not use uh, extra space right and use o of one extra space guys sorry so no auxiliary data structures none of that right they want us to make it in oh one guys okay so we know when they mention of one guy when in post those kind of type of constraints right we need to do some sort of um i'm thinking in place operations things like that right so we got to be very clever with it and very uh smart with it right so how do we do it so what i'm thinking is we could do okay what, what can we do uh, i'm thinking there's some math solutions as well, right, for this problem, right, you know, uh, which uh, we're not going to go over it, right, but I'm going to mention it briefly. Uh, so there's this formula that you can get the sum of the natural first n numbers, right, and 
well, well, how would we use that, right? We would calculate it, right, with the formula, right? And this is the uh, this would this would be the expected sum, right? And then we look through all the numbers in the array, right? We get the sum of all the values, and then we compare the difference. The difference would be on uh, the the number that's missing, pretty much, right? And so that's a pretty decent solution, but we could do a little bit better. Uh, this is a very good solution, right? But you know, it's not very intuitive unless you know the formula ahead of time and you kind of do it, right? But how can we do a little bit better, guys, right? How can we do something that's more intuitive, right, for you guys to understand? So what I'm thinking, we've done problems, right? So we see that the and the values, right, are from zero to n, right? And the indexes of an array, right, are from zero to n minus one, guys, right? If there are n numbers, right, the indexes are, uh, there are n numbers, right, and arrays of size n, right? The index indexes, right, the indices or whatever, right? are from 0 to n minus 1, right? So index 0, index 1, index 2, right? You know the, the, the size 3, n equals 3, guys, right? So we know that, and we know that fact, right? And we also know the fact that the numbers are from 0 to n, right? So I'm just bringing light to this so you guys can kind of see the, uh, how it can be useful, guys, right? And you see the values are strictly within that range, right? They can't, they're not under, there's no negative 1, and there's no, uh, n plus one, right? Okay, so they're strictly within the range, guys, right? So, what I what I'm thinking is that we could map all, each value to the value of its index of the value, right? To the index of its value. So what, what I'm saying is, right, is the we've done a uh, walkthrough uh, of something called cyclic sort, guys, where we just essentially we just put all the uh, numbers, right? To their corresponding index, right? And the corresponding index is the index of is the value that it has, right? Okay, so for example, it makes makes sense, right? So uh, the value of zero, right? That means that this number should be at index zero, right? So it should be the first element here, right? And then one should be at index one, guys, right? So all the numbers will be organized in that way, it's pretty much sorted in that way, right? We call it cyclic sort, right? So very very popular algorithm that you need to know to solve those kind of problems where they have a range right from zero to n and also impose some sort of uh in like uh oh one space guys right very very efficient way to easily solve those kind of problems right? even the hard one guys very very important right so we would essentially sort the array right putting a cyclic sort putting all the elements to their corresponding index and the corresponding index being the value that it has guys right so as simple as that and after doing that, we just loop through the range again, right? From zero to n, right? And we see which element is not at their corresponding index, right? So we check is that for the first end for the first index, right? What value is there? Does it equal to the index, right? If it does not equal to the index, that means that means that we must have not seen that element. Okay. And uh which would make it missing, guys, right? So it's as simple as that, right? So Let's quickly go into the code. I think it'll make even more sense once we get to coding it and everything. So we're gonna have a a uh, pointer that's gonna help us to look through the uh, stuff in the array, guys, right? And what I'm doing here is to just get all well, the index <coughs> is less than nums that one. Okay, so we're gonna just get the correct index, right? So don't worry, I'll put a video up there so you guys can uh, refer to the cyclic source uh, walkthrough that I did, right? I went through it because it's going to help us to solve a lot of problems, right? Similar to this, right? Good. So the correct index for a particular element, right? We calculate that, right? So how do we calculate the index? It should be it should be whatever uh, value that it has, guys, right? Whatever value it has, that's the correct index it should be in, right? And then we're going to check, right, if the value that correct index right so the value of should be I just call this i right no i'm just index if the value at this particular index right does not equal to the value right so whatever value is at the uh correct index right so we get the correct index for this guy for this element right let's say for example zero right we check if zero, right, 
does not equal to the element that's at the correct index, right? So if zero check whatever what's elements there, right? Does it does it not equal zero? Then we know that I should be there, right? I'm sure the one that should be there. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not at my correct position, right? That's what I'm doing here, guys. Right? Simple. I mean, if it makes sense in the comments section, guys, right? Very important. And I get feedback from you guys. Uh, so I can improve, right? So, right? So let's see. All right. So now we're just going to do, we're just going to, we're just swapping, right? The elements, right? And putting it there, right? So three, we would just swap zero and three, right? Putting zero on this spot and then three. And three at that spike either is what I'm saying here. Okay, hopefully it makes sense. Uh, we just do a, a simple swap. Uh, so what we're gonna do we're gonna do nums of index, and then we're gonna do nums of index. Equal. So just a simple swap here. And then guys, uh, if if the element is already at its, at its correct position, right, which means it's already at the correct index, right, that's the equals to the value of that, right, then we know that we're good. So we're just going to increment the pointer to go on to the next element, right? Okay, so after that, what we're going to do is to look through all the elements from, from 0 to n, God, right? And then we're going to check. Okay. Um, from zero n minus one, right? That's what I'm doing here, right? So, we'll do all, all the range, right? Is to see uh, which elements missing. So, we're gonna check if a number, right? Number numbers of i, right? So, for a particular element, right? we're gonna check if it's not equal to the index that we're on, right? Because every element should be at their uh index of the right that it has, right? Which at, at its corresponding index, which is the index of uh, the value that it has, right? So if you want to know the index where element should be, should be at whatever value of index that it has, guys, right? So that's what I'm trying to say. Uh, I don't know if I'm explaining it correctly. So if we encounter the, that case, guys, right? Elements not where it's supposed to be, they will return that number as the missing uh, number, right? If not, then we know that uh, if we went through all the number from zero to n minus one, right? Which is, this is one n minus one, right? Statement, right? Uh, then what we do, we just simply return n as the missing one, right? So there's one more thing that we need to do, right? So remember that case where we have um, three guys, right? Say for example, three, right? I told you guys, uh, so the size of the array is three, but the indexes are, are from zero to n minus one, right? So n will be out of bounds, right? For that case right there. So we get an out of bounds exception. So we need to account for this case. We're going to do a check. Yeah, the check will be if the index, right, the correct index that I'm about to do, right, has to be less than the uh, nums array guys, right? So it has to be within, um, it has to be less than that. All right, so we're going to get index out of bounds. I'm already doing it here, right? You know, also to do it here after I calculate so I get the correct index that an element should be at, right? And I do this check to not get that out of bounds exception. Right? Express run code, see if we're fine. Looks good to me. Express submit. Awesome, guys. We're able to pass all the test cases, guys. If you guys found value, you guys enjoyed this video, leave me know that in the comment section. If you're new here, make sure to subscribe because we'll be doing a lot, of, a lot of other videos just like this one. So I want to thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.